Hi curious people! Today I'm going to tell you all about nail tools. So I'll go over the basics and the really important ones and of course what is the differences between these two nail files and what are some other types of tools that you should invest in. Stay tuned if this is what you're interested in and how you can beef up your nail manicure status. There are many types of nail files to choose from. So first we have the emery board. It's your classic um, double-sided file and it comes in usually 100 and 180 grit uh, flip side. Um, there are new ones that come in a finer grit, 240 and even 300 or 320 and then it goes up from there. You can also buy files like this. This is still an emery file where it has multiple grits and I love this one. It has step one, step two. This one feels like 300-ish and it gets smoother and smoother. Next we have metal files and this one is by Revlon. It is etched metal. They get a really bad rep because it says this is for more artificial nails and you should not use it on natural nails because it will like tear it up, split your ends, and create jagged edges. But this Revlon one is really good if you do want to get a metal one. However, this is not super easy to clean and so what happens is you can get bacteria and fungus trapped in this these grooves and then unless you are actually cleaning it like soaking it in a solution it's hard to get into like the nitty-gritty these emery boards are easier to clean but they do wear out really easily so what you can do is get these thin disposable ones and once you finish it up you just toss it and get a new one and so I bought a pack of 10 of these and it's really nice. It is two different grits. It is 180 and 240. And next we have something called a stone or ceramic file. This is actually my personal favorite. It works the best um, for natural nails. So it depends on what kind of nails you have, um, but this is the best. Um, it is more like the 240 kind of grit, but what the best feature is right here, this edge, so you can get the underside part instead of trying to finagle a flat surface on the underside. All right, we have something called wooden files, which I personally have never seen, and they are for coarse type of nails like toes and really thick like fingernails so it just depends and there are a new invention called glass nail, uh, nail files now and I personally don't have one because they cost about ten dollars each and I just have so many of these regular ones but you let me know down in the comments if you have used or own a glass file and if you enjoy it um, there are new ones called e-files nowadays and it's electronic and how it works is a little spinning drill bit and it polishes or grinds off like your ridges which is not recommended don't do that and so forth. Um, it is a bit of like a learning curve with the e-files so I do not recommend those unless you know what you're doing and you have very very fine motor skills where like you don't shake so it's not for everyone um, or if you're just like not a smooth person you could take off too much with the e-file here are the different types of grits that you will see on emery boards or nail files and the ones that are stone and crystal or the glass ones will not be like named or numbered like this so Grits is a way to show you how coarse or fine sandpaper is and the more grit it has, the more smooth it is or to help you smooth out something. So the grit is like the physical number of particles and that's why the higher the number, the smoother it is. 
So here we have 100 grit. This is basically your standard nail file. It is double sided and it comes in this half moon shape to help you hold it and do your job really quickly. Um, there are some where the edges are rounded and that's really helpful to get in there on the edges. So the next grit we have is the 180. This is a little bit more smooth than this. Personally, I hate the 100. It is way too coarse and it will really take your nail down too quickly. Um, but if you like that or you like are trying to file down your toenails that are extra thick, this is the way to go. Next we have 240. This is the closest to my stone nail file that I really love and it is my personal favorite. You also need it for buffing the gel, sorry, buffing the shine in preparation for gel application. So you definitely need these two type of grits. You can go even smoother and get yourself a buffer like this one. This one's by Kiss. It has this like step one where the coarseness is more like 240 or like 300 and then step two is like pretty smooth and then here it's just like downright shiny, right? And it really creates a crazy shine on your nail if you're trying to go for the natural look. Revlon also makes this buffer block that I obviously enjoyed back when I didn't have any time to paint my nails. So this is also a good option. This one to take the shine off and this other side to really shine it up. I actually started to just never use this side and just only do the buffer. And then as I go along with my days, it will come out to the shiny without me doing the work. And that's grits in a nutshell. These are the different types of tools you can use to remove your cuticle or to smooth out the cuticle eponymium area. So first we have plastic. This is what just comes with my stone file. So at the end here. So the warning about plastic is it is dissolvable in acetone. So don't ever use this while you're trying to scrape off gel nails like I did. And then you start ruining the tip. But that's okay because we have other tools we can use. So we have the orange wood stick. And usually it's made by orange wood, this very specific type of wood. And you can get really long ones like these that I have where one end is dipped in the same material to make emery boards, which is basically sandpaper. And the other end is filed. So it's like a chisel shape. So you can use it to remove your cuticle dead skin. All right, we have my favorite is the metal file or the metal cuticle pusher. So you use this um, and you push. The bad thing about metal is that it is metal. So it's very strong, especially if you don't know what you're doing, you're still a novice and you can really hurt yourself or push too hard too deep. Um, they come with two sides usually. So the other side is this regular chisel like the one on the orange wood stick. I do prefer this side where it is more curved so it fits the curvature of my natural nail. And if you're on a really low budget, you, you really want to get started but you just don't have any tools and all the stores are still closed and you can't go out. You know, there's always Amazon, but everyone has a spoon. So what you can do is just get yourself a plastic or metal spoon. Check the edge to make sure it's not too um, scratchy or like rough. And just hold it close like this and use it to scrape your cuticles and just get started. You might want to use and get yourself the metal one because it's just more durable and it's way easier to clean. So that's just my recommendation for you. Nippers or cuticle nippers or trimmers. And so this one is my current favorite. It is the Tweezerman stainless and it has a really nice spring loaded action. And so how it works is it's angled and you can get really, really close and 
it is very pointed so you do have to be careful it's very sharp it is lifetime warranty in the sense of they give you free sharpening if it ever wears out which it will in like many years and so that's really nice with the tweezerman round next we have this style where it's more of a v trimmer and you will trim it off like this by just like trimming along i don't enjoy this one but some people like it and I have it. It's nice because on this side is a cuticle pusher, so it's a two-in-one tool. Next, we have just kind of like scissors. And so how it works is you're going to just trim off the extra skin like that. This does not work. Don't buy these. Um, because you just can't get close enough. That's the issue, right? So you can use this for other things like trimming some eyebrow hairs or something like that next you have something like this where it basically is the nippers except the profile is different so you see how it is curved so it'll fit curved to your finger and the cuticle area i don't have the hang of this one but you know other people like it so it just depends on what you are used to and what you learn to use highly recommend these style of nippers if you don't want to use any nippers what you can do is just learn how to scrape it off you going with a perpendicular motion so first you push and then you scrape it off this way and then you can go in with a regular nail trimmers and just trim it up alrighty these are my favorite hand creams at the moment so obviously there's so many options you might not know what to go with but you really can't go wrong as long as you moisturize so first you do want to use some sort of cuticle cream um, or cuticle oil this one is by Sally Hansen and it is vitamin E nail and cuticle oil and is in the strange but delicious vanilla buttercream scent. It is not overwhelmingly strong actually and they also make other fragrances like peppermint um, but I actually prefer this one to peppermint. It's excellent. Uh, it has this brush applicator and um, a little bit goes a long way so what you want to do is scrape off until you feel like there's nothing on the brush and then you apply um, I use one dip for the entire hand so I cover all of here and I go up the side and then I repeat on the other fingers don't forget about your thumb because your thumb is one of the most used phalanges all right so it is great it has that nice uh, brush uh, so what other people do is just get one of those uh, dispenser pens with a cap and they fill it with vitamin E oil nothing fancy and then they just twist it and then it comes out of this like brush applicator I'll put an image here next we have unscented version fragrance free and just a little dab will do the trick so this is amazing. It's by Neutrogena. It is only $3.99, $4. And um, one huge tube lasts you like literally forever. So you just add like literally a little bit. You see that? Just a little bit. And that is enough for both hands. All right. So let me just show you real fast. So this is how I like to do it. I rub it and I smear it. And then I get it on my cuticles don't forget your thumb and then I repeat on the other back of the hand don't forget your thumb and then I rub it like this I rub my thumbs and then I finish rubbing all right next up if you're feeling a little fancy and want to use something more luxurious we have thymes gold leaf gardenia uh, it smells amazing and I just love anything floral so this is a great one 
If you want something that is goat milk based, Dionys makes this amazing jasmine scented goat milk hand cream. Of course, they make other fragrances, so if you want goat milk, this is a great brand. Crabtree and Evelyn, I don't know what's happening with them, but they've closed a lot of stores. But I love their hand cream, and even though their packaging is not as amazing as like the next one, um, they make really, really great hand creams. And this one's in rose water, and of course, you know, Curious Rose. And here we have the Acetane en Provence. I never took French, so I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And this it was a gift from someone really special and it's made in France. This is the OG uh, cream for hands and it's extra dry skin with 20% shea or shea butter. So it's awesome. It has a very distinct smell. Um, so to me, it just like smells like fancy France products. <laughs> Uh, but you let me know which one is your favorite. They make like 20 other fragrances, but this is the OG. You should definitely try it once in your life. All right, I hope you guys learned a lot about nail tools. Obviously, something I didn't touch on is nail polish. There's just so many kinds, and I'll be posting more videos about wear tests and types of polish and brands I like. So if you're interested in those, feel free to check out my other videos. Uh, but my top favorites are, of course, the LSE Gel Couture. Uh, this is an awesome, fun summer color uh, in 210 on the list. And I just did a wear test on this set, the OPI Gel Color in Princess Rule, which is a nude glittery pink, and the OPI Pro Health line top coat and base coat. So if you're interested in knowing more about these, check out my other video. I need a bigger hand. <laughs> okay, everything's okay. <laughs>